theme is how to save the world. And um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, you've you've lived in, you were a chiropractor. Yeah. And uh, what year was that? 19, <coughs> 1960 mm -hmm. to about 1978. And uh, that's before uh, I... I stopped because basically I got thrown in jail for practicing without a license. Uh -huh. I became a chiropractor. New York State didn't have a, it wasn't a licensed, certified licensed state by the Board of Education, the Board of Education in New York. And, uh, <coughs> I didn't care about uh, studying to take the license. Um, and uh, so finally my family Particularly my my wife and daughter said, "Why don't you, why don't you study?" So I went to a crash course where med students were studying to take their state boards, and I studied and I eventually passed. Uh -huh. you know, got my license, and um, it's funny when I did pass, it was nothing. And then 20 years later, I felt like I did accomplish something because I never could imagine myself. Uh, yeah. uh, passing uh, microbiology and pathology and neurophysiology and all the all the basic sciences, basically. You know. And I found practicing and being with people, trying to save people. But I came, I came upon a thought one day in practice, saying that if I had the largest practice in in the world, and I was restoring health and well-being. I wouldn't be able to take care of everybody. Uh -huh. And so uh, that caused me to, to relax a little bit and not get too frantic about having a large practice. Uh -huh. I did, I did um, accomplish a pretty sizable practice. Uh -huh. uh, because my, my, uh, my uh, financial fee was on a giving basis, and I had a box and people gave what they could afford. Uh -huh. And, and so that was initially my way of saving the world from sickness. Uh -huh. And um, but chiropractic, uh, the principle of it is that you get the big idea, all else follows. So I, so we start practicing, uh, seeking to remove interference from above the atlas. In other words, interference in the mental thinking. Uh -huh. okay? And. Um, and that took me a certain, that took me in a few cycles of time. And um, I got to, uh, got to a point where, um, you know, the quote in the Bible, the, the statement, what good is man if he gains the whole world and loses himself? For some reason, that always kept haunting me. Uh -huh. like, uh, not so much do I have it together that I want to save everybody, uh -huh. uh, save yourself first. And I saw the, you know, the, uh, I don't know if it's a paradox or the dynamics of uh, doing something yourself and extending that out to other people. And I never was one to uh, impose uh, my enthusiasm, although I, I, I like to think I was a very enthusiastic person. In other words, I always kept a respect for people's space, uh, not literally, but figuratively speaking, and not to jam something to, into them of uh -huh. what, what's, what's working for me. And um, so I, I found that as the years gone on, I, I discovered increasingly, and I guess it's never ending, discovered that, um, you know, it's the old adage, actually, um, Alan Hammond, a good friend of ours, used to say, you drop the pebble and the ripple goes out. Hmm. Right? And so it comes back to uh, what, what am I really doing in my living? Hmm. Um, is it always is it always increasing in uh, in being genuine and being authentic? Uh, it, to use a simple phrase, is it always getting better, uh, or did I arrive of of uh, not reproving myself but uh, cleaning up my act mm. that uh, most people don't know behind the curtains, mm. so to speak, of my living mm. and my being. And so I started doing that kind of work, you know, start doing my work, as mm -hmm. they say, in the, the last 25 years. And I found that um, 
it has its effect because if, if something is happening with me, I'm part of something much larger than myself. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, I thought I was so large that I could change the whole of and save the world. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and I came to a, I came to a, a thinking, uh, I came to a certain thinking that I'm part of something much larger. And if I, if I allow changes to continue to occur in me, and never arriving, what would they be if I did arrive? But aside from that, then then there would be some kind of influence in the in some, in a in a context that I live in, a larger context that I live in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not the whole, but I'm part of the whole. Mm -hmm. I'm part of the, the puzzle. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm a piece, and I'm not I'm not just a little old piece. You know, one 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 piece missing is not a it's not a it's not a whole anymore. So that began to. You know, I began to see that there's more balance, and it seemed like I was more grounded. Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting too carried away with myself, so to speak. And this happened, I mean, did you, did you meet your teacher? I mean, that's Martin, but well, did you, I, was that before or after you met? Um, when you were doing chiropractic? Well, when know, I was doing chiropractic, Emerson was, uh -huh. was my, he turned the corner. He uh -huh. helped me turn the corner. Uh -huh. that, that essence, that vibration, whatever you want to call it, Whatever attunement I had with him, with reading, um, the, the the thing that, that made me realize that I need to turn the corner to just describe it in a certain way was when I read in Self Reliance, envy is ignorance and imitation is suicide. So I was fair. I said, well, this this could be the easiest thing for me to be who I am because there's nobody like me, <laughs> and that really set me going. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in, when I just started chiropractic school. Uh -huh. And then when I graduated, I met Martin, mm -hmm. Martin Cecil or Martin Exeter. Uh, and um, he, he, he showed me the, uh, how profound the art of living is, the artistry of being who I am and the living of life. Mm -hmm. So he, he um, grounded it even more than Emerson for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I saw him in a way where uh, he, he, he had a uh, presentation called, uh, it's amazing, I'm thinking of it right now, working with things as they are so that you could show your artistry. Hmm. I, and I was intrigued with this, oh my gosh. <laughs> because it was bringing out something in me that, that uh, you know, didn't resist certain circumstances or certain situations or resist a certain way to think. Uh, it, always, I, it always allowed me to exercise a healthy way of looking at things, that the circumstance and situations and the world is the way it is. Now the question is, how do you express your artistry in this? And mm -hmm. the finest of art is the artistry of living. Mm -hmm. It always allowed me to exercise a healthy way of looking at things, that the circumstance and situations and the world is the way it is. Now the question is, how do you express your artistry in this? And mm -hmm. the finest of art is the artistry of living. Mm -hmm.